Psalm 40 verse 1 to 9, through the Bible. Psalm 40. Theme. A Messianic Psalm Predicting the Crucifixion of Christ. Two Messianic Psalms, 40 and 41, conclude the Genesis section of the Psalms. They are called Messianic Psalms because they are so quoted in the New Testament, which makes them especially important. I waited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined unto me and heard my cry. Psalm 40 verse 1. This is a proper psalm to follow Psalm 39. All of these psalms go together, that is, you will note a continuity. There are those who feel that this psalm expresses the experience of David in his flight from Absalom, and that is accurate to a point. But this psalm is quoted in the epistle to the Hebrews in a most remarkable way. In this psalm, the one who celebrates in praise and thanksgiving, the resurrection, the triumph and ascension, is the Lord Jesus Himself. This is truly a messianic psalm. It reveals that the death of Christ was not a defeat at all. It was a great victory. When He says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined unto me and heard my cry, He is referring to His cry from the cross. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. Psalm 40 verse 2 Christ's agony and death is likened to a horrible pit, a pit of destruction. We cannot conceive how terrible the death of Christ on the cross really was. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Psalm 40 verse 3. This verse mentions a new song. We have read about a new song before. It is the song of redemption. Many shall see it and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. What are they going to see? They will see the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Psalm 40 verse 4 Our Lord Jesus Christ is the example of a man who puts his trust in God, who does not respect the proud, and who does not turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to us ward. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Psalm 40 verse 5. God has revealed what He thinks of us by sending His Son to die on the cross. At the time I am writing this, I often hear speculations as to the possibility of life on planets other than our own. I am certainly no expert in this field, but I think it may be possible that other planets are inhabited. But I can guarantee this. There will not be a cross on any of the planets out there in space. It was only here that the Son of God died on a cross. How wonderful! Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are toward us. My, how the cross reveals God's love for us. Now the following is quoted in the epistle to the Hebrews. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mine ears hast thou opened. Burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me, I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained my lips, O Lord, thou knowest. Psalm 40 verse 6 to 9. This is a marvelous psalm that follows the preceding one which reveals the frailty of man. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mine ears hast thou opened. Now notice how this is quoted in Hebrews 10 verse 5. Wherefore when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. But a body hast thou prepared me. Now, wait a minute. Is this misquoted? Critics of the Bible say, Oh, here is an error, 
a contradiction in the Bible. In Psalm 40 verse 6 it says, Mine ears hast thou opened, and in Hebrews it says, A body hast thou prepared me. The Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible. He wrote the Old Testament and the New Testament. He wrote both Psalms and Hebrews, and he has a perfect right to change his own writing. When he does, there is always a good reason. Now let's consider the background. In Exodus 21, there is a law concerning servants and masters. If a man became a slave to another man, at the end of a certain period of time, he could go free. Suppose during that period he met another slave, a woman, they fell in love and married and had children. When it was time for the man to go free, he could leave, but his wife and children could not go with him because she was a slave. What could this man do? He could decide that because he loved his master and his wife he would not leave. Then his master shall bring him unto the judges. He shall also bring him to the door, or unto the door post, and his master shall bore his ear through with an awl, and he shall serve him for ever. Exodus 21 verse 6 The psalmist is referring to this custom when he says, Mine ears hast thou opened. When the Lord Jesus came to this earth, did he have his ear thrust through with an awl? No, he was given a body. He took upon himself our humanity. He identified himself with us, and he became a servant. And he became a sacrifice. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. God did not delight in all the animal offerings in the Old Testament, but they pointed to the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now notice what Isaiah says on this subject. The Lord God hath opened mine ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. Isaiah 50 verse 5 This verse is prophesying the humiliation of the servant, Christ, who would come to earth. When the Lord Jesus came down to this earth and went to the cross, his ear wasn't opened or digged. He was given a body and that body was nailed to a cross. My friend, he has taken a glorified body with nail prints in it, back to heaven, and he will bear those nail prints and scars throughout eternity, that you and I might be presented without spot or blemish before him. You see, he did more than have his ear bored through with an awl. He gave his body to be crucified because he loved us and would not return to heaven without us. My friend, this is a marvelous messianic psalm that reveals the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ because he loved us.